Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center on the campus of Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. This is Ryan Pratt alongside Mark Franke calling the action in tonight's women's volleyball matchup between the Islanders of Texas A&M Corpus Christi and the IPFW Mastodons. This is the conclusion of day one of the 2003 Division I Women's Independent Volleyball Championship Tournament. Here are the starting lineups. First for the visiting Islanders. Outside hitter Melanie Travis. Junior middle blocker Lauren Smith. Audrey Leger, the setter. Kara Wells, senior. Alexis Berger, right side player. Kaylee Romes, the defensive specialist. Head coach is Frances Kinnison in her third season at the helm of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. For the Mastodons, starting setter Lindy Bankowski, junior. Outside hitter Janelle Pollard. Claire Jackson's in the middle for IPFW, six foot freshman. Kirsta Solberg out of Huron, Ohio, the senior. Amanda Fister starting outside. Fabiana Souza, middle blocker. And Sarah Leffers is the libero for IPFW. Head coach is Kelly Hartley in her fifth season here at IPFW. And a great record, 20 wins, nine losses for Hartley's Angels. As you take a look at head coach Francis Kinnison of the Islanders. Perhaps hard to identify, both teams in their blue. IPFW on the near side of the court from this camera angle. And the Islanders will serve first. Number 15, the center. Analyst Froze Froman. Nice dig in the backcourt. Here is Souza. And Souza hits the ball long. Both of these matches, both of these teams rather, have played a match earlier today. IPFW won in straight sets 3 0. And Northern uh, Colorado, however, defeated uh, Corpus Christi earlier today. So 0 1 start for them, 1 0 for IPFW. And another hitting error, two in a row, Mark Franke, uh, two nothing lead. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem if uh, we continue uh, to have those hitting errors throughout the night. Uh, Fabi Sosa, her first hitting error out of the back row, that's a key to our offense, is her back row off offensive capability. Restoring some order there is Kirsten Solberg with the kill. Point in possession IPFW, Janelle Pollard to serve things up. Senior out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Cut shot inside, nice up by Amanda Feaster. Who's in the starting lineup for Kelly Hartley's crew. Nice backcourt defense, pinball-like. Another great day at Bankowski. Souza with the down ball. And she'll score. That's what I was talking about, Ryan. You notice that uh, when the setter handled the first ball and someone else had to make the set, they immediately went to where Fabiana Sosa was hitting from, which is the pipe position, the middle of the back row. The junior Pollard continue to serve its 2-2. Trouble here, IPFW transition. Bankowski, left side, Feaster. Over the top and down. A little miscommunication there between Travis and Leger. Yeah. IPFW, three. Islanders too. The IPFW freshmen are doing quite a job, aren't they, Ryan? They have done a spectacular job this year. In fact, earlier this week, in the last game of the regular season, if you will, uh, Kristen Mann came off the bench, sparked IPFW to a five-set victory over Toledo. 3-3. Both these teams have played before IPFW and Corpus Christi. In fact, IPFW leads the se season series two games to none. They beat 
beat the Islanders back in uh, October, three games to none. Solberg puts away her second kill, 4-3 IPFW. IPFW 20 and nine on the season, they've won 11 straight. The school record is 16 set by two teams, the 1986 and then the 1996 squad. Tip played up by Solberg, Bankowski will set left, Feaster. Off the hands, played up nicely by Leger. Leffers, sweet dig in the backcourt. Dug up, Travis. Sozon, two. Froman, back set. Down the line goes Travis, she's dug. Long rally here early, 4-3 Dons. And a great put away there by number seven, Amanda Feaster, the 5'10 freshman out of Auburn, Indiana. I like that uh, one play that it didn't work, but uh, where Linda Bankowski handles the first ball and it's fairly soft, she can actually set the first ball and the second attempt becomes the, the attack. Through the hands and down, Melanie Travis. Six foot senior out of Austin, Texas with her kill. 5-4 Dons leading. I watched a little bit of the of their earlier match this afternoon and Melanie Travis was quite impressive, I thought. She gets a lot of balls when she's front row. Chasing, chasing goes Travis. And this ball's gonna squeak over. Feaster plays it up. Nice coverage there. Right side, Solberg tools the block. Here's we the Solberg off to a good start, three kills. We weren't ready for that ball, were we? We should have, we should have killed that one and just barely came over the net. 6-4, Don's leading. Solberg to serve it up. The senior, one of three on Kelly Hartley's squad. Here comes the 6-2 substitutions. What I mean by 6-2 is that they use two different setters, so the setter is always in the back row, and they always have an opposite or a right side hitter in the front row. And in fact, Melanie Travis, who I was quite impressed with, only plays through the front row and then goes out. Sosa around the horn and the put away there on the back slide. Point and possession, IPFW 7-5 lead. Back to serve is the freshman Amanda Feaster. IPFW Mark, we've talked on it in the opening. They're clicking on all cylinders. They're handling the ball really well. They're serving tough. They're playing good backcourt defense. That shot tags the line. Number 22, Alexis Berger. She'll go back to serve, 5'10", junior, out of Yokum, Texas. As I mentioned earlier today, Corpus Christi, they lost to a very talented Northern Colorado team. Three games to none, 30-18, 30-18, Melanie Travis was the hitting star. She had 10 kills, three errors, 27 attempts, she hit 26%. But the team as a whole, however, only hit nine to Colorado's 41. Not gonna get the job done there. Great shot by Janelle Pollard over the top. Substitution, Claire Jackson will check into the lineup for IPFW. Fabiana Souza, the team leader in almost every statistical category for the Dons. Kills, blocks, aces, digs, hitting percentage. And that'll be a service error. 8-7, Dons leading. Lauren Smith now will serve it up. Junior out of, 6'2", junior out of Richmond, Texas. A lot of height on this Islander ball club. Pollard finds the line, great cross court shot there. Janelle Pollard has been hampered in the latter stages of the season, Mark, uh, because of injuries. There have been a lot of injuries, uh, especially through the middle part of the season, and that's when those freshmen came along quite well. But uh, right now we're all healthy, and with four matches in two days, you need a uh, fully healthy squad in order to last it out. Pollard, another swing on the left side, it's coming over. Perfect pass, Leffers, Solberg, tips. And will score. Krista Solberg, four kills early on. She's on fire. 10-7, Don's leading. Lindy Bankowski will serve things up for IPFW. Out of Temperance, Michigan. And un unable to control that dig is Sarah Leffers. Back at the libero spot for Kelly Hartley instead of the other senior, Nicole Ray. That was quite a shot. First, there's everything she could do just to get the ball up, but unfortunately she wasn't able to control it very well. There's a service error by Annalise Froman, the setter. 
IPFW earlier today played Utah Valley. They won in four, got off to a good start winning game 130 to 28. They were up big in game two, however, dropped that one 33-31, then cruised in games three and four to solidify the victory. Number five, IPFW looking to go 2-0 in the tournament. They will match Northern Colorado. Both of those teams will play tomorrow afternoon at 12.30 p.m. We'll be back on the air for the 7 o'clock match with Texas Pan America. 11-9, IPFW leading in game one, and Jackson terminates the overpass. Nice job by Claire Jackson. She'll come out as Nicole Ray. The specialist will come in out of Northside High School right here in Fort Wayne, the senior, 5'6". That was a nice, aggressive, being ready approach to that overpass. That's an easy point if you're ready and you go up aggressively to, to uh, make it a full attack on it. IPFW perhaps a bit shaky. Service error there by Nicole Ray. A lot of adrenaline behind that serve. Carries long, 12-10 Dons leading. And there's a service ace right back at you. Audrey Legere out of Austin, Texas with the service ace. Setter slash outside hitter. The 6-2 offense that head coach Francis Kinnison likes to run. Perfect pass by Solberg on the money for Bankowski who sets up Sozo in the middle. Fabiana Sozo this year has followed in what was an unbelievable freshman campaign. This year thus far, coming into tonight's match, 521 kills on the season. And down the hatch goes Froman on the left side. That 6-2 offense you're talking about, Ryan, is kind of unusual at the NCAA level. You see it a lot more in high school. But if you have uh, two really good setters, or if you think that you're giving up too much with blocking with the setter, then that's a, it's an option a coach can use. And apparently Corpus Christi finds it to their advantage because they've used it now both times I've seen them play today. Here is Kristen Mann checking into the lineup for IPFW to serve. The 5'11 freshman out of Richmond, Indiana. Combination play, nice dig by Mann on the right side. Souza couldn't get a good approach. However, manages to find the open spot on the floor and just binks it over. Smart shot. And we'll have a technical timeout called. It's 15-12 IPFW leading here in game one. We'll take a break and come back with more. You're watching IPFW Women's Volleyball here on College 56. Um, hi. I was wondering if maybe, if you wanted to go out maybe or something, if you had time. I can tell by your excitable behavior and verbal faux pas that you have generalized anxiety with paranoid tendencies. It would never work. Okay, thanks. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. The Don is on hand here at the Hilliard Gates Sports Center. Conclusion of day one competition of the 2003 Women's Independent Volleyball Championship Tournament. IPFW leading Corpus Christi, Texas A&M, 15 to 12. IPFW has come out of the gates, hitting really well. 13 kills, two errors, 44%. Kristen Mann will continue to serve things up for the Dons. Both teams are hitting well, Ryan. Both are over 40%. That's pretty impressive. Ball passed up by Wells, back set. And that tip by Berger goes wide. Point IPFW 16-12. One thing that's, another thing that's unusual about the Corpus Christi offense is it appears a right side player starts in the middle for one rotation, then moves to the right for the next two. And they seem to do that routinely. Great cut shot in the middle by number 12, Lauren Smith. 6-2 junior. Point in possession to Corpus Christi, it's 16-13 IPFW leading. Serving here is Alexis Berger. Here's Pollard on the left side, great dig. Berger, down ball for the Dons. Her 
perfect pass by the specialist Ray. Around the horn goes Souza. And she hits it wide. Point to Corpus Christi. Good eyes there. Service is wide. 17-14. The Dons have not lost a game since they played Eastern Michigan here at home back on October the 4th. They've rung in 11 consecutive victories. In fact, I think, was that the last time we telecast before they went on this win streak, Ryan, you I guys said so. something about uh, they needed to run the table from here on out to get to 20 wins. And they have done so. You know, Ryan, did you... Ask, uh, did you hear from any of our coaches why the switch in the libero tonight? I didn't, I didn't know they were doing that either. It doesn't matter a lot because you can play a defensive specialist. Libero can play six rotations, and the defensive specialist three. Nice dig there in the back. Here's Bankowski setting left tight, set to Pollard. Ball dug up by Hill. Back set. Off the hands goes Laura Mann. Great shot by number nine, Laura Mann. And just like that, it's now 17-16 IPFW as Kelly Hartley's up off the bench shouting some encouragement to her ladies. One of the things that I think we have to be careful about, I talked to Coach Kevin Lane before the match about this, is there, there are a lot of soft shots come from the Corpus Christi side, and that causes the defense to want to move up. And then when the balls hit hard, they're too close. That last play we saw, they were back expecting a harder hit. It came soft, and they couldn't come up in time to play it. Here comes a substitution. Lindsey Brammer is going to check in the lineup for Claire Jackson. We're tied at 17. I got to ask you, Mark, because I asked uh, head coach uh, Francis Kinnison about this, about the format. How difficult is it to play two matches in virtually about seven, a seven-hour span? Well, uh, I think it's probably more difficult for women's game than men's game because the rallies are longer. There's actually more physical involvement. But uh, it's, I think it's been helped by the rally scoring, which tends to keep matches shorter, especially if one team is clearly dominating. But it's still, at the end of the season, as I said earlier, if you have a number of injuries or players are tired, you're going to have trouble getting through to the end. A battle of attrition. And there's a double contact called on Fernanda Bastos. Great time to introduce our number one official, Eric Bulman. He's assisted by Greg Roth. IPFW 19, Texas A&M Corpus Christi 17. The knee Bankowski to serve. The jump floater nice and deep. Into the middle. Nice dig by Leffers. Pollard, wow, an awkward set there again. Down the line, just out. Leger just missed it. That uh, was something we didn't see last week. And Chris is on the delivery, I call the delivery of the set. It gets to where the hitter expects it can handle it. Now we've seen Lindy Minkowski uh, be a little tight off of it, out a little bit. And that might be also a, a, a fatigue thing. The setters get tired, they, they are less good at controlling the, the direction and location of the set. Nice point there, and head coach Kinnison wants to talk things over as IPFW leads 21-17 here in game one. Learn more about IPFW sports by tuning into the Mastodon Spotlight each Wednesday and Thursday and Friday here on College 56. Host Mike Maz reviews recent sports activities, looks at games footage and visits with coaches and players. That's Mastodon Spotlight Wednesdays at 11 o'clock p.m., Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m., and Saturdays at 12 noon right here on College Cable Access Channel 15. And this week, Mike will have on his program head coach Kelly Hartley with junior outside hitter Janelle Pollard. And next week's show, he'll have a wrap-up of the women's volleyball season, and a great one it has been. Uh, Kelly Hartley, Steve Florio, the assistant coach, will also join him, as well as the three seniors, Nicole Ray, Sarah Leffers, and Kirsten Solberg. So that should be a very nice show uh, next week. So tune in to the Mastodon Spotlight with your host, Mike Moss. Game one, IPFW 21, Corpus Christi 17. IPFW got off to a good start. Corpus Christi able to come back. Now IPFW has a four point advantage. Lindy Bankowski did continue to serve things up. Back set by Bastos. Ball tipped over the net. In the middle, Brammer. She'll set. Solberg on the right. 
And shanking that one was Bastos. Great shot by Kirsten Solberg. She has five kills hitting 71%. Both teams' hitting percentages have gone down. They're now around 26-27%. Five-point Don's lead. Back set to Mann. Managed to play that ball in the between the pins. I don't know how she got that inside the pin. That was a nice play on her part. And a net violation can be called there on number eight, Kirsten Solberg. Point in possession goes to Corpus Christi. For the season, IPFW, they're out hitting their opponents 20% to 18%. But their offense obviously has been able to increase dramatically because of the way that they've been handling the volleyball, not only just off of serve reception, but on defense as well, Mark. Yeah, ball handling, I think, has been the key to our turnaround in our season. We've been playing so well because not only does it allow to run our offense, but it gives the players more confidence in the rest of their game. Sarah Hill with the tap down on the overpass. It's 22-20. Serving is number 15, Annalise Froman. Out of Round Rock, Texas. 5'9 freshman setter. Grammer goes behind Bankowski, and that's a hitting error. Another point. Three in a row. And head coach Kelly Hartley wants to slow things down. A nice run here by Corpus Christi. It's now 22-21. Just recapping the matches that occurred today. The first match, Northern Colorado defeated uh, University of Texas Pan America three games to none. In game two, Utah Valley had a very tough one. Uh, lost to IPFW after taking game two from the Dons when they were up big. IPFW managing to win in four. Northern Colorado then took the court against this Corpus Christi team and uh, beat them in a big way. 30-18, 30-18, 30-16. Northern Colorado 2-0 after day one competition. And just before we came on the air tonight, Utah Valley defeated Pan America uh, three games to none. They put their record to one and one. So the team with the best overall record after tomorrow's competition will be crowned Division I Independent Women's Championship. Of course, IPFW won it last year. I was really impressed with Utah Valley. Twice seen them, seen them play twice today. Both times I saw him come back from deep deficits to win a game. A lot of heart and character on that team for sure. Great shot, Lindsey Brammer in the middle. Another, another, I'm sorry, Ryan, another thing about what has helped us is because we're clicking more in terms of our execution, our attacks have picked up velocity, and that helps. Souza with the dig in the backcourt. Here's Mann swinging on the left. She's dug by Berger. Little ding shot score by Froman. Smart shot there catching IPFW, perhaps in a bit of a celebratory mode early. And they knew that was coming. They were prepared for that, or at least from a scouting report, they were ready for it. They weren't able to pick it up there. IPFW by one. Brammer on a two ball in the middle. And Lindsey Brammer, who has had a very impressive late surge in the season offensively for Kelly Hartley, puts the kill away 24-22. A two ball, Ryan, being a little higher, maybe it's a little farther off the net, or they can use it when they're farther off the net than the typical middle attack, which you'd call a one ball. Souza winning that joust easily. 25-22, and Kennison's up, and she wants to call timeout. 25-22 IPFW leading here in the late stages of game one. IPFW will come back here tomorrow, as I mentioned, and play Northern Colorado at 12.30. The match before that at 10.30, however, will have Utah Valley State against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Then at 3 o'clock p.m., Texas A&M Corpus Christi again will take on Texas Pan American. At 5 o'clock, Northern Colorado will take on Utah Valley State. And in the nightcap, IPFW will take on Texas Pan American and ruling two-day schedule because these are five very talented Division I independent teams. That IPFW Northern Colorado match is going to be a real good one to watch tomorrow. So if you're able to come out to the gym for that one, you'll definitely want to take it in. All right, IPFW 25, Corpus Christi 22. If you're head coach Kelly Hartley, you're telling your squad what? To continue to execute like they have been over the last uh, several minutes. Make sure they're running their offense, make sure they're getting good swings and keep handling the ball. I mean, they just have to keep 
doing what they've been doing over the last four weeks. Has complacency perhaps set in for IPFW? 20 wins on a season. We're near the end. I'm not sure it's complacency. I think at the end of the season, you, just, you get somewhat physically tired, a little mentally tired, and you tend to try to coast a little bit. Not so much out of complacency or overconfidence. It's just, I think, a natural thing of the human body and the human mind. Nice kill there. Perhaps satisfied was a, would be a better word. Well, yeah, I think they have to be satisfied with their performance, but they also know that this weekend means a tr there's a trophy at the end of it. This is what they've played for all season long. A chance to repeat as Division I Independent Champions as Amanda Feaster tees off on the left side. Came inside that block. Nice shot by a freshman. She, she plays smarter than a freshman, I think. Don't, would you agree with that? I Ryan? would agree with that. Her, Kristen Mann, Nicole Howell. Three names to look for in the future for head coach Kelly Hartley. How about that pancake by Feaster? Dripping with syrup. <laughs> Ray in the backcourt. Solberg. And missing the micro touch. What a play by the freshman. Right on cue, Mark Frocky, Amanda Feaster. Stole that line from Chris Gislin. Chris Gislin. 27 23, <laughs> Don's leading. What, the pancake line? A pancake is where a player lays her hand flat on the floor and the ball lands on it and pops up. Solberg, nice dig. Oh, that's Froman. over. Wow, that ball. Wow. Able to keep it, be kept in play by Berger. That was a nice play by Berger. And Feaster puts the ball away, 28-23 IPFW. Chris Gislin, former setter here for head coach Arnie Ball in the IPFW men's volleyball program. And a member of the U.S. men's national team for a while as well. In the middle, great cut shot, number 12, Lord Smith. I believe this is what Corpus Christi has to do. they got to pass the ball well to establish the middle. 6-2, six, 6-2 two, six, two middles. you got to run the middle a little bit more. Yeah, they clearly outsize IPFW, and they have to take advantage of that height. Fernando Bastos out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. So good matchup against Fabiana Souza out of Belo Horizonte, Brazil. As Souza is stuffed at the net. Three-point lead for the Dons, 28-25. Coach Kinnison showing the serving service instructions for Bastos. Short serve to Ray. They'll try another backslide, and this time jamming it through is Fabiana Souza. That's really interesting to go back to her after she was blocked, especially when you're talking about the 29th point. As you see, that uh, the setter has a lot of confidence in her hitter. Great set by Lindy Bankowski to Souza. Game points now for IPFW, four of them. Man with the float serve. Froman sets left. Hill is dug. A chance for game one. Got it. Souza terminates in the middle, and IPFW takes game one, 30 to 25. We'll take a break, come back with some statistics, and the start of game two in a moment. You're watching the 2003 Women's Independent Volleyball Championship right here on College 56 Sports. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names.
For the best coverage of IPFW athletics, please tune in to Mastodon Spotlight each week here on College Cable Access Channel 56. Hi, I'm Mike Maz, your host. We talk with student athletes, coaches, and others involved in IPFW athletics. Whether it's softball, volleyball, baseball, basketball, or whatever, the best way to catch IPFW athletics is to tune in to Mastodon Spotlight each week here on College Cable Access Channel 56. Welcome back, everybody, to the Hillary Gate Sports Center on the campus of IPFW. College 56 Sports bringing you the 2003 IP Independent Women's Volleyball Championship Tournament. With Mark Franke, I'm Ryan Prod. IPFW took game one from Corpus Christi, 30 to 25. Mark Franke, your thoughts on game one? We just saw Gene Heffron in that crowd shot. Uh, Gene had said earlier that that uh, Fabiana Sosa's play out of the back row has become so effective. She's doing such a good job of controlling the ball that she's, she's got a lot of open court and she finds the hole. She's able to put some velocity on it, but even more importantly, she's able to direct the ball where the defense isn't. And so out of the back row, her hitting percentage has got to be tremendous. We don't have the stats broken down that way, but it's got to be huge. And Tim Heffron uh, coached the 1996 team that won 16 matches in a row. So the Gene, Gene was assisting him and was Gene that was year. Gene was assistant yeah. coach that year. And another interesting thing about Fabiana Souza that I saw this afternoon as Lindy Bankowski will start things off for game two, she corkscrews the ball better than any volleyball player I have ever seen, man or woman. So difficult. Is corkscrew another Chris Gislin term? No, that's my term. That's your term. That's for a ball coming left to right when you're almost like your back is to the to the net and you have to turn almost 360 like to hit the ball. She does it better than anybody I have ever seen. So it's your body, your corkscrewing, not the ball. Oh, Melanie Travis and the Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi, Christi Islanders touch. begging for a touch. Chris Wilder said no touch. No call. Another point to IPFW. It's 2-0. In game two, and oh, the Islanders look in disarray here after losing game one, 30-25. IPFW, 27%. They have 24 kills, 8 errors as a team. Fabiana Souza has 8 kills. She's the match high. Melanie Travis and Lauren Smith each have 3 kills for the Islanders who only had three hitting errors in game one, hit 24%. They actually only had two in game one. One of them's come here. We had eight hitting errors. They only had two, but we had 23 kills, so they're 14. That made up for that, for that uh, error difference. A perfect dig there by Froman, gone by the wayside as the Islanders stood and watched that one hit the floor. 4-1. The Islanders are going to have to wake up, or this could be a short match. Brammer setting Solberg on the right. Nice up, chasing goes Berger. Little quick set dink by Solberg. Swinging his man, and it's out of bounds. That was a nice double quick play, but I don't think Kirsta Solberg either knew she was supposed to be there or she was late getting there. Otherwise, it would have been a rather impressive double quick on the transition. Service ace, Janelle Pollard. And IPFW has come out of the gates on fire here in game two, leading six to one. Burgers dug. Free ball by IPFW. Oh, and Souza couldn't get it over. She tried to be too cute with that one. Tried to put it in the setter area to have the setter handle the first contact. Just clipped the tape. When uh you have to free ball it over. The first thing you have to do is get it over, right? <laughs> Feaster, and that'll be fourth contact. That ball didn't clear 6-3. IPFW, we mentioned head coach Kelly Hartley starting Amanda Feaster, but she does have that option. The depth now on her bench, uh, bringing off Brammer now from the bench. Nicole Howell, Kristen Mann, Nicole Ray. I asked specifically why Feaster instead of Howell uh, because Howell started much of the early part of the season and we were quite impressed with her play. Uh, Amanda Feaster gives about a foot more in, in elevation when she reaches than Nicole Howell and that's why she's out there tonight against this big block. Lift called there. 
on Sarah Leffers. Point in possession, IPFW. Here come a couple substitutions for the Islanders. Going back to serve is number three, Fernanda Bastos. 7-4 IPFW leading here in game two. They took game one. This is the best three of five set match. First four games we rallied to 30. It must win by two point on every play. And Kirsten Solberg, she has had a very steady game offensively for IPFW. Seven kills, she's hitting 33%. On the season, she's hitting 18%. So the number is high against this Islander squad. There's an overpass. And Souza with the tap down. Got Thought called for a back row block by the setter. I'm not sure if their setter hit it. She was up and realized she couldn't touch the ball. It's kind of a strange play all the way around. In the middle, and there it is. Lauren Smith, this is the way that the Islanders are going to get back into the match if they run some middle. Both middles hitting at a high percentage thus far in the match. The Islanders trail by four. Berger with the float serve. Bankowski to Solza. And she's blocked. Smith and Hill were there for the rejection. Now this should come as no surprise to the IPFW side, but there's always two blockers on Fabiana Sosa. Now she's been successful against that block for the most part, but we have to make sure we keep the other options open, like that one we just saw. Feaster down that hatch. In terms of the distribution, where we got, uh, I don't see it on the up-to-date stats, but in game one, uh, it was 14 sets for Sosa, about 11 for Solberg, 12 for Pollard. Feaster got eight. Kristen Mann has checked into the back line for IPFW. Backslide, Sosa's blocked. Going on to Pollard, and she puts it into the net. Point to Corpus Christi. It's now 10-7, Don's leading. I think Janelle Pollard is struggling. I saw that earlier today. She's come back from an injury, hasn't she, just recently? Her knee injury. And I think maybe she's had a little, having some trouble getting uh, back into the old swing. And nice jamming ball. it down is Lindy Bankowski at five foot four inches tall. I've been really impressed with her aggressiveness at the net, and I believe that it's come from the confidence she's developed because the passing is better, she can set better, and that allows her to be confident all the way around. I think her aggressiveness at the net, given her height, is an indication of that. Here's Souza out of the D spot, and Fabiana Souza puts another one through. There is no question that Kelly Hartley's Dons are playing with so much confidence. It is expected 11 in a row, 20 wins on the season. Volleyball is like what Yogi Berra said, 90% of the game is half mental. And Whatever Solberg out of the back line. And head coach Francis Kinnison wants to talk things over. 13-7 IPFW leading in game two. We'll take a break and come back. You're watching IPFW Women's Volleyball here on College 56 Sports. The Mastodons 13, the Islanders 7. Good look at our crowd here on this Friday evening at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center on the campus of IPFW. The Don is in the house, breaking it down to a little Michael Jackson. Shades of Mark Franke in his youth. Yeah, I'm trying to think whether I to give up my Channel 56 career and become the Don next year. They'd probably pay you to just stay here. <laughs> Lift called there on... Bastos, another point to IPFW. It's a seven point spread now. Fabiana Souza, what a year. She leads IPFW in kills, 521 coming in the match. She leads IPFWs in blocks, 95 on the season. She leads IPFW in aces with 50 now. And in digs as well, 384. 
15-7, IPFW leading. Smiles all around from her. And she'll go into the jump floater. Oh, it's a beauty. It's a beauty. We just had some confusion here about whether there'd be a technical timeout at point 15, and I think the rule is, I'm having trouble figuring it out, but I think the rule is, if neither team has called a timeout by 15, then there's a technical. That's correct. But Corpus Christi's already called one, so there was no technical timeout. That is correct. And the Corpus Christi coaching staff wanted the timeout there for free. They're only allowed <laughs> two per game, so they, they would have liked to have had the free one. Wow, Souza, very effective jump floater. Soft block played up by Bankowski. Here's Souza out of the back line. She's dug. Back set, man. No relation to Kristen. Backslide, wide open. Puck. Brammer gets the touch. Nice shot by Lindsay Brammer. Lindsay hitting 20% on the season. It's now a 10 point lead for IPFW. Froman plays it over. Here's Pollard. Nice up by Wells. Hill takes a swing. The dig, Souza, the swing is into the net. Finally, the bleeding stops for the Islanders. Eight serving, 17. So nine kills for Souza so far, but her average now is down to 21%. Off speed, dug up. Here's Sarah Hill. Another dig by Souza. She's playing very good defense. And a great, smart shot by Janelle Pollard. Down the line. That's her fifth kill of the night. 18-8. Another tough jump floater. Nice block by Brammer. And the block, Lindsey Brammer. Great job by her going one-on-one -on -one in the middle. What makes the jump float serve, Mark, so effective for IPFW? I have no idea. I, I, I do not understand why that has become so effective in both the women's and the men's game. You see it in the men's game a lot where they're hitting the ball 90 miles an hour or more, and they've given that up for that slow floater. It's got to be the way the ball moves uh, left to right, I would think. That's just a guess. Tough set there. IPFW in transition. Shoot set is blocked. Nice block at the net by Melanie Travis and Sarah Hill. And going back to that, that uh, serving question, what do you think, Brian? Well, I had a chance to talk to, uh, to Arnie Ball, head coach of the men's program here, and he was telling me coaching the World University Games team this summer in South Korea, teams at that level, these are the elite college players playing, they had as much difficulty as these college players here handling the jump floats. Are. Everybody is now used to the heat that all these players can bring with the hard, heavy topspin, whether it's an attack or a serve. I think everybody now expects that. And the old traditional float serve, where the ball can move inch to inch, side to side, they just have trouble moving their feet and reading the spin of the ball these days that it's just difficult to pass. So once again, Yogi Bear has proved correct. <laughs> it's, it's, more, it's more of a mental thing than a physical thing then. Mostly, yeah. And you see it more, obviously, the topspin, the jump serves, the topspin jump serves, and obviously the spike attacks as that one goes to the net. It's 20-11 IPFW leading here in game two than you do with the off-speed shots. We've got some really, uh, uh, I guess I'll say ugly offense going on. Corpus Christi's hitting zero, IPFW 16%. There's a service error. Nicole Ray will check into the game to serve in place of Lindsey Brammer, 21-11. But that just seems to be the trend now in volleyball, that jump floater. Do you think it's the rally scoring that the, the what you call the spinner or the hard, the heat, the heater, the hard hit serve has a higher tendency for error, which is a point against you, and so they become more tentative or more conservative? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. When that rule was established that we were going to go to a rally score, everybody went back and jump served the heck out of the ball, and especially with the let serve, ball can hit the tape and come over that the jump serve, the topspin jump serve is still prevalent. Now, those with effective jump float serves, a la Jeff Petak for the men's uh, volleyball team, Lindy Bankowski and Fabiana Souza here, who all have topspin jump serves. Fabiana does have a topspin, but she prefers to go with that floater, perhaps just because of what we said, that there's a service ace by Solberg, because other teams don't see that that often. 
it's a very, very effective weapon in the service game. Another good serve by Solberg. Around the horn and down the hatch goes number 10, Carol Wells. First time I ever saw a jump floater was about 1991 or two. Uh, Brian Raul, Ivey. No, Raul oh. Papaleo uh, went back to jump, and I think he just plain missed the ball. Denny Johnson said, what was that? He says, well, that's my new jump floater. <laughs> Backslide, Souza. There's a smart off-speed tip shot by Souza. Wow, her game continues to get better year in and year out. At this pace, and I don't want to jinx her in any way, but at this pace, she could perhaps have over 2,000 kills in her career. Through two seasons, she's well over 1,000 kills. The record, Laura Douglas, has 1,800 kills. I think, Ryan, that, that you're correct for two reasons. One is, last season especially, more so than this season, our offense was very unbalanced. She got an inordinate number of, of sets. The other thing going for is, as I said earlier, because of her effectiveness out of the back row, she is now a six rotation hitter. Yes. Pollard off the hands, dug up by Smith. Basto sets left, Berger dug around the horn, and Souza's rejected by Hill and Berger. The, yeah. the other thing that this presents, and I think we saw it there, how do you cover that particular play? If she's going to swing around from the backside and hit it that hard, if it's blocked well, if the blockers have penetrated, that block's going to go deep into the court. So you've got to, you've got to adjust your, your block coverage such that you can pick it up. With that point, it's now 25-15. IPFW in control of game two. And here comes Souza out of Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Another tough jump floater. Down ball coming for IPFW. Leffers, perfect pass. Wow, Brammer puts it away in the middle. Nice job by Sarah Leffers and Nicole Ray in the backcourt handling the volleyball for IPFW. 26-15, Don's leading here in game two. You can do more than just sit on the sidelines. Participate in the excitement of Mastodon Athletics by joining the Royal Don's Club. The Royal Don's is IPFW's official athletic booster organization. Members enjoy priority seating at IPFW sports events and visits by the coaches and food and refreshments in the hospitality room. For more information about the Royal Don's, call 481-6643 or write to the Royal Don's Club, 2101 East Coliseum Boulevard, right here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Or go to the IPFW Athletics website at www.ipfw.edu slash there's our, there's our future Don. Did you see her? She's already got the move. She just has to grow into the suit. <laughs> A good look at the crowd here at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. The 2003 Women's Independent Volleyball Championship Tournament. Not only is there a big contingent of IPFW Mastodon fans, but throughout the course of the day, Mark, you and I have both been here all day long. There's also been a nice contingent of crowd for all the other teams as well that is here. You shouldn't have mentioned that I've spent most of the day here when I should have been working, Ryan. <laughs> I'm not going to be in trouble with my boss when he hears that. Yeah, you're right. They're, uh, they're both, they have five teams here, and, and the teams spend a lot of time in the gym watching other teams play. And when you're playing, uh, you have one match off, you play before and after that match, you can't really go back to your hotel or anything. Right. 27-15. That adds to the fatigue in a tournament format like this because you do spend a good part of the day in the gym. And that can wear you out, not just physically, but mentally as well, watching Absolutely. so much volleyball. Nice dig by Solberg. Here she comes out of the pipe and tried to be a little cute with that into the net for a hitting here. Going back to that fatigue thing, you figuratively have to wake back up. It's hard to get going again, to generate the energy, getting the legs going. It's not something an athlete can turn on or off no matter how much a coach yells about it. Checking into the IPFW lineup is freshman outside hitter number 15, Brittany Brenner. She's a graduate of Northrop High School. She's checked in for Fabiana Souza in the back line. Bankowski going over the top. Pollard, nice dig. She's going to get a swing here on the left side. And that ball hit the antenna out of bounds. Point to the Islanders. It's a 10-point Don's lead. Overpass. 
Oh, good chance to score. That set way wide. Solberg with a down ball. Nice dig. Wells. Left side Hill. And she puts it away. Sarah Hill. 6'3 senior out of Plano, Texas. Gives the Islanders point number 18. They trail by nine here in game two. They trail one game to none in this best of five set match. Pollard. Off speed, great shot, Janelle Pollard. What an arsenal of offense she has. She, because of her size, she gives up a few inches out there. She has to be a shot maker. And I, the, the more she does that, I think the more she'll get her confidence back over this weekend. And a lift gonna be called there on uh, Brenner. I don't know, would you call that a lift? Yes, flat out. Flat out. <laughs> you know me and ball handling. Flat out. 28 19. Don's leading. This is coming from a guy who used to bump set every ball. <laughs> Down the line goes Pollard. Great shot, and we've come to game points now for IPFW. Ten of them. Whenever you. Serve as Janelle Pollard. Whenever you would go to handle that second ball, the entire coaching staff would just cringe. Little Ooh. setters big. Nice job by Froman. It's because I had my hands taped. It was kind of <laughs> difficult to use my hands. But those, all those bump passes were nectar. Another game point for IPFW. And that's going to end it on the service error there by Audrey Leger. And the Mastodons in control from the get-go in game two take it 30 to 20. We'll take a break. IPFW leads two games to none over the Islanders of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. We'll come back. You're watching the 2003 Women's Independent Volleyball Championship right here on College 56 Sports. Um, hi. I was wondering if maybe, if you wanted to go out maybe or something, if you had time. I can tell by your excitable behavior and verbal faux pas that you have generalized anxiety with paranoid tendencies. It would never work. Okay, thanks. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. of IPFW with Mark Franke. I'm Ryan Parad. We're glad you're with us this Friday evening enjoying the 2003 Division I Women's Invitational Volleyball Championship Tournament. IPFW taking on Texas A&M Corpus Christi. There are the scores of the first two games. IPFW 30-25 in game one. IPFW 30-20 in game two. Mark Franke, a look at the statistics for two games. Well, there's one statistic that really stands out and I think probably the IPFW coaching staff is noticing this too. I see Steve Florio here drawing on, on the stat sheet. 17 hitting errors for IPFW. That's way, way too many. If, you know, the given, I realize that they've got a big block over there, but 17 errors to only five by Corpus Christi. Now, now we also have more, more kills, 39 to 21, but I think 17 is, is not a defensible number. Corpus Christi's out blocking IPFW, four blocks to two as well. But you'd expect that, I guess, with their height. Right, with that height. Fabiana Souza is the match high in kill. She has 12. She's hitting 25%. Amanda Feaster has five kills. Kirsten Solberg has eight kills. Janelle Pollard has seven. And Lindsey Brammer has five coming off the bench. She's hitting 38%. For the Islanders, Melanie Travis has five kills. So too does Lauren Smith. And a couple of players, each with two. That's Froman and Berger. One thing that's that's nice about IPFW's offense, the distribution's been good. Sosa 24 sets, Pollard 23, Solberg 20. I'd like to see uh, Feaster get a few more. She's only got 10. 
So IPFW will receive first here in game three. The Islanders will serve first. See if they can get on the score sheet with a victory in a game. Froman with the float serve. Here's Kirsta swinging on the left side. And there's another hitting error. First point goes to the Islanders, 1-0. I guess I'm not going to see Feaster get more sets. Nicole Howell has replaced her for game three. Nicole Howell has checked in to start here in game three. Solberg down the line, Froman, that's a sweet up. Hill. Oh, nice scramble defense by IPFW. In the middle, Hill. Souza's there. Bankowski. Solberg. Got it. Great transitional defense by IPFW. 1-1. One, one. And here comes one of the most pleasant surprises for head coach Kelly Hartley this season. Number two, Nicole Howell. I was wrong. Nicole Howell's in, um, in Pollard's spot. Tight set. Solberg punches it over. And Froberg tried to dink that ball over unsuccessfully, however. 2-1 IPFW. Nicole Howell, freshman right here out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Bishop Lures graduate, 5'10 freshman. 41 service aces on the season. She's got a great jump serve. Here it comes. And it's into the net. You shouldn't say things like that, Ryan. 2-2. <laughs> Yeah, it was bound to happen. Yeah. Sarah Hill, 6'3". She doesn't jump float it, does she? No. All topspin from Nicole Howell. Aggressive play by the freshman. Brammer in the middle. Great pooch shot by Lindsey Brammer. That's just a smart shot there. They did a nice job with that low set. The set should have been probably 6 to 12 inches higher. She did a good job with it. Great shot by the junior. Here's Nicole Ray serving IPFW up by one, third, three to two. Flat pass. Oh, what an up by Nicole Ray against Melanie Travis. Bankowski's there with the dig. Feaster on the left. Nice cover. Feaster again. Off speed. Here's Wells. She's blocked. Long rally here early in game three. And Souza sails it long. Another hitting error for IPFW. That's 19 for them now. I would have in that earlier play after we dug Travis, after Nicole Ray made that great dig, I'd have gone back to her on the next set. Give her a second chance at it. 3-3. Three, three. Little tip shot blocked. Two blockers there. Travis and Smith. Corpus Christi out blocking IPFW 4 to 2. And Solberg on the right side puts it away. Great shot by Kirsta Solberg now in double digits and kills. She has 10. The senior out of Huron, Ohio, an MVP player at a tournament earlier this year in Cleveland State. Off the hands goes Travis. Here's Feaster. Oh, great one-arm dig by Wells. Unfortunately unable to control. Great shot. They'll give a kill to Feaster on that one. Don's five. Islanders four. See ya. Fabiana Souza on the overpass at 6-4. By the way, I mentioned earlier that Fabiana has the opportunity of perhaps going over 2,000 kills on her career. That'll be a back row violation there on Souza. No. Nope. It was on Fulman. Uh, and a card's Fulman. coming out by Eric Bulman. There was a back row on, on Froman. She and was back row setter and went up. And when Souza attacked the ball, she was touching it, which made it an illegal block. Melanie Travis has just been yellow carded for the Islanders. And net violation there on the block by Souza. But Souza has a chance to go over 2,000 kills in her career. The IPFW leader in that category is Laura Douglas. 1,895 kills over her illustrious career here at IPFW, 1997 to 2000. And in fact, I saw Laura the other day. In fact, she played in the 
Women's Alumni Volleyball Tournament. And man, is she something else. She still got it. She's a grade school teacher here in Fort Wayne, I believe. And I think she's coaching at St. John's Lutheran downtown. She, she coaches their grade school team. My wife coaches, so uh, they coach against each other. Kristen Mann will go back to serve for IPFW. It's a three-point lead, 8-3. IPFW took game one, 30-25. They took game two, 30-20. Nice pass in the middle. Smith was blocked. Here's Mann with a tip. Souza in the nice. middle. That's what Jean Heffern was talking about. You notice how she got it? She got it through the block and then split the backcourt defense as well with it. Souza now has 15 kills on the night, 24% hitting percentage. Backslide, Wells sneaks it through to the ground. That one was slow developing, but our, but our backcourt defense stayed frozen even when we got the touch. IPFW playing really well. What do the Islanders have to do, Mark, to get some spark? They look quiet, unenthused, lethargic. What do they need to get the spark, get a rally, anything? It, it would be n nice for them, I would think, if they could be a little more effective with their blocking because they have that advantage. And a great wipe shot there by number... Oh, Eric oh. Bulman missed that one. That was a sweet wipe shot by Sarah Hill. Nicely done. Unfortunately, Eric Bulman, the number one official, did not see that. Francis Kinnison off the bench said, you've got to be kidding me. Nonetheless, point in possession, IPFW. And a service ace by Souza right on the line. 11-6, five-point lead. I wonder, um, Corpus Christi obviously coming from Texas, if the officiating is different enough here in the upper Midwest from the Southwest that um, it, it makes it more difficult for a coach to, to go somewhere like that and then get used to the way they call some of those things, which tend to be somewhat judgmental. Lindsey Brammer just terminated a ball in the middle for IPFW. Her seventh kill now. That ball was deflected, and Brammer's going to get credited for that block there. It's now 13-7. IPFW, and here comes the timeout by Frances Kinnison as she wants to talk things over to Greg Roth on that perhaps blown call I think on the wipe me, shot by Sarah Hill. You asked me earlier what um, Corpus Christi ought to do, and I told you what I thought they ought to do, but what they have to prevent IPFW from doing is what IPFW has just done in the last five minutes. Run an offense with a lot of heat, a lot of different options, the ball coming from all over. And once IPFW gets into that, there's Corpus Christi, there's not much they're going to be able to do. And they have to get off of the officiating. They've got to quit worrying about whether they don't like the calls because that becomes self-defeating. And we, we, we did have the opportunity to speak with Coach Kinnison before the match. and She wasn't too pleased about the officiating thus far during the course of the day earlier. And uh, obviously it's evident here tonight with the... Uh, that perhaps blown call, um, Sarah Hill on the white. Well, I think I think you're right, Ryan. That, that call should have gone to them. But so what? You're gonna, you're going to lose exactly. lose it's a over. call like that every night, and you just go on. And they pr just prior to that, they'd been yellow carded. Exactly. So they got to get out of the tank in a big way. They're down six points here in game three. They're down two games to none. They got to leave the officiating to the officials. You want to tell Coach Arnie Ball that? No. <laughs> and there's a put away. Let's see if this kill gets the Islanders going. IPFW has been steady all night. They've been on top from the get-go. They look strong. Perhaps want to get out of here early since they have that very tough match against Northern Colorado at 12.30 on Saturday. Here's Howell with her swing from the right side. What an off-speed shot by the freshman, Nicole Howell. You don't see that very much out of her, so that was a very bright play, a, a smart one, knowing that if she hammered it, she, she had a big block in front of her, and it probably would have come back at her, so she took the soft shot. 14-8, Don's leading. Howell will spin it up. 
There's forces an overpass. Feaster nice. on two and another off-speed shot. Wow, on their heels are the Islanders expecting heat. Two back-to-back off-speed shots resulting in points for the Dons. 15-8, IPFW leading. And her second service error of the night for Howell. Sarah Hill will serve for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. This team hosted the Division I Women's Independent Tournament a year ago. That's where IPFW won the tournament. And Solberg gets it off the block. Early this year, IPFW had a chance to go back to Corpus Christi to play in a tournament with the individual independent teams. Coming away with that tournament victory. And here they are now hosting the 2003 tournament. Ray, tough float serve, it's an ace. That's probably why they had to shift to Libero. Nicole Rake, when she was playing Libero, could not serve, and she is a good server. That's true. They may have, uh, and she and Sarah Leffers both play that Libero position well. So there is some interchangeability for Coach Kelly Hartley. Another sick floater by Ray. Off speed, oh. Nice shot by Chris Fisher, number 26. Tooling the block that time on Amanda Feaster. Freshman error, down ball coming. Perhaps no need to jump on that one. But the Donsons are playing such good backcourt defense to pick that up and turn in transition. Froman shoots it over on two. Bankowski sets Feaster on the left side. She goes over the top, but it's about three inches long. Another point here to the Islanders. It's a six-point Dons lead, 17-11. Soza is roofed. That's probably a little tight, knowing that she'd have two blockers there, and she just went up and swung as hard as she could at it. Lauren Smith with her fourth block of the night. Lauren Smith, the middle for the Islanders. She's hitting 86%, six kills, but perhaps she's not seeing enough balls in order to make a, a big contribution or at least a difference in the match here tonight. Roman into the middle to Travis. They need to get Travis into the offense more, but I think the reason you're seeing not a lot of middle offense is now that she forced it there. That was not a real good pass to run middle on, but she's got confidence in Travis. She knew she could do that front slide thing. But when the pass is not almost perfect, you have to be careful running the middle. Bastos will serve. Perfect set by Bankowski. Perfect kill by Feaster. Amanda Feaster now with seven kills, hitting 29%. IPFW as a team, 23%, 50 kills. However, 22 hitting errors. They have 55 digs to 43 for the Islanders. In the middle, cut shot, blocked. Smith sets left, that one's gonna go out of bounds. And IPFW has reached the 20 point plateau. It's now 2013. Kristen Mann, the freshman. Nice float serve. Bastos. And miscommunication there with Laura Mann in the middle. Another free point to IPFW. In cruise control here at the Gate Sports Center. Look at Stephen Florio, first year assistant coach for Kelly Hartley, Kevin Lane as well. Trainer is Scott Kinner. Off the hands goes Howell. Froman sets left, and a nice cut shot by Laura Mann, resulting in a point to Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Kara Wells will serve things up. 5'10 senior. They're working on Solberg, and Solberg oh is passing nails. Off speed, Ray is there. Outside, Howell. Off the hands of Mann. Basto sets left. Nice soft block by Bankowski. Tight set Powell. Off speeds Doug. Joust coming. In the middle. And putting it away is number 12, Lauren Smith. Nice cut shot by Lauren Smith. What a, an acute angle to turn out right there. Wow. 
I think Lindy Mankowski gave up nearly a full 12 inches on that joust, and she still pushed the ball across. <laughs> Mankowski, Howell down the line. Oh, it's the kind of night it has been for the Islanders. Right in the bread basket, and it's a whiff. Howell getting a good laugh in. No laughing on the side of Texas A&M Corpus Christi, that's for sure. They've been frustrated all day. The libero puts the ball over. Brammer with the A shoot set. Lindsey Brammer, nice job by her. Eight kills, 55% and IPFW. With that timeout being called by Corpus Christi leads 23 to 15. You can get up-to-date information on all of the Mastodon teams online by going to www.ipfw.edu slash athletics, the official Mastodon website. Once again, that's www.ipfw.edu slash athletics, the official IPFW Mastodon's website. IPFW and cruise control here at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. A good look at the head coach of the men's volleyball program. Arnie Ball with his wife Sandy in attendance here at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. Nice crowd on hand. Soccer players, basketball players, baseball players. In fact, last night the IPFW men's basketball team took on the Harlem Globetrotters at the Memorial Coliseum. Nice night by all. Score not important, but it was a nice learning experience by the IPFW men's basketball team. They'll open up their season next week. In fact, Dick Vitale will be here on campus next Friday for homecoming on the 21st at 6.30, I believe, and then he'll head over to the Coliseum at 7 o'clock for the match that IPFW will play against Toledo next Friday, the 21st of November at the Memorial Coliseum. There's that cruise control you were talking about. You gotta be careful with that. You really have to be careful when you have a lead and you think you just can coast into the win. Around the horn goes Brammer, it's out of bounds, another point. The women's basketball team also played earlier this week. They took on Bethel. They won. They'll also open up their season in the coming weeks. Of course, Mike Moss will take over the duties of College 56 Sports Telecasts beginning in late November with some basketball action right here on College 56 Sports. He's excited for that, as so are we. 24-17 Dons. Oh, nice play by Bankowski to play it off the net. Man sets left. Hill got it. Over the top and down, Sarah Hill. Six-point lead for IPFW. Our backcourt defense, especially the middle back position, I thought was weak earlier in the season. And uh, I think it's improved. Coaching staff thinks it's improved. But right there, uh, she didn't react quickly enough to that ball. At least she was back. She was... She was she was in her base position, so she had a chance at it. Here's Hal. Off speed, over pass, see ya! Lindsey Brammer putting perhaps the excl exclamation point on the match. 26-18. Good, nice, fluid stroke by Hal. Miscommunication by the Islanders, free ball. Ball. Tight pass there by the freshman. Souza's there, back set, Solberg. Coach Kinnison wanted a back row blocking call, but Lindy Mankowski never touched the ball. You can jump all you want, do anything you want. If you don't touch the ball, it's not an illegal block. There's correct? been a lot of confusion throughout the course of the season, more so in the last couple of weeks in regards to this back row attack, Mark. Explain. Well, the center's in the back row and she's up there. She can't she can't go up and do a blocking action and contact the ball. In other words, she can't get it above the net. And so frequently, uh, what you see is when, when that occurs, everybody thinks it's illegal for different reasons, and it's, the official has to watch very carefully. And he, he immediately signaled, Eric Beaumont immediately signaled it was a clean play, she did not touch the ball. If she had, of course, it would have been a Corpus Christi point. Dons by six, here in game three. Back set, Solberg, great tool shot by Kirsten Solberg. Her numbers now, 12 kills, 5 errors, 
5% attack percentage for the senior. Don's three points away from taking a 2-0 record into tomorrow. And Kristen Mann tees off. They will go against Northern Colorado, who's also 2-2. Two and, two. and we just saw there the same thing. The setter was back row, so she didn't go up. It looked like she didn't try. She couldn't try. She could not do anything about uh, Mann's attack on the overpass. Oh, and Sarah Leffers mismangles that ball, giving a point in possession to the Islanders. 28, 21, Don's two points away. Chris Fisher to serve things up. She's got a sister, Kim, on the team as well. They're both at 6-3. Kim is the freshman. Chris is the sophomore. Chris will get the serve again. With that hitting error, six-point lead. 24 hitting errors for the Mastodons. I'm sure they can't afford that tomorrow against Northern Colorado. And that'll be four contacts as that ball came hit. through. That ball came through Froman's hands. Hit Fisher in the face. I think that was that was a setting mishandle call. No. I think that's what he called. Four contacts. Okay. Your <laughs> eyes are better than mine. <laughs> I'm not arguing on that one. Game point for the Mastodons. Match point, in fact. Out of the back line, Bremer. Oh, she faked the swing. The crowd wanted her to. Left side, Wells. And Wells staves off elimination for the moment. Here's what happened. The ball was dug through the hands. That's one contact. Hits another player in the face. That's two. The middle goes to set it to the outside. That's three. The outside hitter hits it. Four contacts. Good well, call by it Eric Blumont. Was four call and it contacts, was four contacts. I thought he called a mishandle on the setter on the third contact. Match point. Don Souza does it. IPFW takes it in three straight by the scores of 30-25, 30-20, and 30-23. Their record 2-0, Northern Colorado 2-0. They will clash tomorrow here at the Hillary Gate Sports Center at 12.30 p.m. So if you can, make it out here to the Hillier Gate Sports Center for what should surely be the match of the tournament. And then we're back tomorrow night with the other Texas team. With Pan American at 7 o'clock right here on College 56 Sports. IPFW, Mark, your thoughts. They played really clean volleyball from the get-go. They got off to a very good start. They continued to do the things that have gotten them to this point. Now with this victory, that's 21 on the season now, 12 straight. But th they handled the ball right from the get-go. They passed great. They played back great backcourt defense. They were clicking again on all cylinders. The, yeah, the only thing you could you could say about our our uh, execution is the hitting errors. There, there were way too many. There were 24 on the match. We ended up only hitting 23%. Actually, 23% is not a particularly poor hitting percentage, but with 24 errors, it, it, can you imagine what it would have been if we'd have been right. had a little better ball control? Exactly. We had a lot of them.